Hi, I'm Billy, one of the Fuji guys, here to show you the first look at the Fujifilm X-Pro1. This is a, a camera with the same styling of the X100, all in black of course, but now offers the ability to interchange uh, lenses using Fujifilm's new X-Mount uh, that's found on, on this camera. So, uh, the X-Mount design was really um, designed to p allow Fujifilm to create you know, the sharpest and highest resolving power uh, camera that we can get. Uh, in this category of cameras and one of the reasons for that is is that it, it allows us to create a shorter flange distance between the lens and the body and so that we can reduce the back focus distance to the image sensor itself and by having a reduced uh, a back focus we can actually uh, maximize light efficiency going through the lens and going towards the sensor itself again producing you know unbelievable sharp and 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 and, and, and bright images uh, you know using this type of technology of course the sensor itself the camera uses an APS-C sensor it's a 16 megapixel uh, APS-C CMOS sensor and uh, has you know the low bypass filter removed so that you can provide for even sharper resolution but of course we have to deal with the uh, moray issue that uh, you know bear patterns have you know by putting a low pass filter so what we've done is we designed the color filter arrays instead of using a, a two by two Bayer filter pattern which actually has a lot of repeating patterns which is what the cause of you know a lot of moires in, in images which is sort of like like in terms of you know taking pictures of checkered shirts you see that uh, that that uh, false image and false color um, so what we've done was created a new uh, filter array that mimics that of you know grain of film where what we take a look at film there's this large grain small grains and they're all random and so what we did was created a six by six grid um, for the color filter arrays and containing 36 different pixels of red blue and green in a somewhat random pa uh, pattern and so uh, it actually uh, prevents uh, the issues of moraes happening without the use of a low pass filter or an AA you know anti aliasing filter which allows for highest resolution which is again the big reason for not just only the customization of this X mount, but also for the customization of uh, the sensor technology too, to work efficiently with the different lenses. So taking a look at the lenses that are offered the X Pro One, we first have the 18 millimeter f2 lens. Again, this is a prime lens, non-zoom lens. And the reason for all these lenses that we introduce is really about image quality. We know that a fixed focus lens uh, it's going to give you the sharpest images possible, and we wanted to do that first. And so this camera, or this lens, when we attach this to the Expo One, uh, eventually will give us, in terms of the 35 millimeter equivalency, to approximately um, a 27 millimeter lens. So as you see, it's attached like that. So it's wider than the X100 in that sense. It's, it's still an F2 lens. It's very fast. There is a thread on it. It's a 52 millimeter thread. And of course, it does come with a low lens hood as well. As you can see, in terms of, of the actual lens itself, there's aperture controls on the lens uh, in one third increments with uh, markings for, for one stop uh, from F2 to, again, F16. And of course, A meaning the automatic. And there's a button release right here where you can push it down and remove the lens from the camera. And of course, the lens itself has a good weight. Its metal construction really shows for the quality of this lens. Uh, the second lens that uh, Fujifilm is offering is the um, f you know 35 millimeter f 1.4 lens, and that is approximately equivalent to uh, 53 millimeters in terms of 35 millimeter equivalencies on the X Pro One. So 53 millimeter equivalency lens is is a great focal lens for you know uh, somewhat a, a mid portrait or candid portrait, and it's um, you know um, uh, sort of what the eye sort of see in terms of the uh, the focal. Um, length on, on the lens. Uh, it has a 52 millimeter filter, just like the uh, just like the uh, the wider angle version of the lens. And again, you have the manual focus ring on this lens, on, and also the aperture controls. Again, from f 1.4 all the way to f 16, uh, with again one third increments, uh, so that uh, again you can use the camera and do one third stops without taking your eyes out the the viewfinder. So again, putting that lens on that again, matching the. Uh, lineups for the uh, red tabs. As you can see, it does look uh, very nice. Again, you got the manual zoom, um, and then you got the aperture controls again in one-third stops. So that's the 50mm uh, lens. So I'm just going to leave that on this camera. Um, the last lens to show off really, and I really like this lens, and this is actually the Fujinon 60mm f2.4 lens. So again, a very, very fast lens. It has a 39mm thread on it, so you can attach any, any commercially available filters. Again, the hood is included. 
you got the manual focus ring as well again as the one third stop apertures from an f 2.4 all the way to an f 22 instead on this camera um, as you can see the design of some of these cameras here the the end the last lens element uh, whether it's this piece or it's the uh, the wider angle one as you can see the glass element right there it's very, very close so that when you have the image sensor, again, like we said, by allowing us for the customized X mount, we can make these lens not just more compact, but also produce the lens to be closer to the sensor so that light has to travel less. And that's going to reduce any issues of, of, of incorrect uh, you know, light bouncing in from different directions. And again, these lenses are high quality Fujinon lenses. You know, all of them have spherical lenses, and a few of these have sort of the extra dispersion lens uh, built in to provide for, uh, you know, of course, better image quality. So again, those are the three types of lenses. I'm just going to put this cap back into each one here uh, quickly. And uh, let's take a look at actually get the x one now. So again, this is uh, with the 35 millimeter, uh, 35 millimeter lens, an f1.4 lens. And of course, on this camera to a 35 millimeter um, film camera, it's equivalent to uh, approximately 53 millimeters. Uh, so let's look at the operation. We've got that one-third stop, like I mentioned. We've got the, uh, the manual, zoom, uh, manual focusing options. On the front of the camera, this is where you actually change the focusing mechanism from manual uh, continuous to uh, single autofocus. You've got that release button that's found. Again, on, on similar range finder style cameras is on this side. Of course, on the S5 Pro, it was on the opposite side. So ideally, when you're changing lenses, you're going to probably hold the camera like this, hold that button, and twist the lens off of the, uh, off the camera. Again, this is a, an X-mount lens. And of course, you have the, the, the various numeral contacts that are, uh, again, made specifically for Fuji, Fujinon lenses and for this particular amount. And the reason for that is we wanted high levels of information being traveled from the lens so that we can create any corrections, whether it's the focal range, or sorry, the focal length of the lens, to the aperture, to even any chromatic aberration controls and effects that we learned from designing on this camera to be corrected internally. And having that high speed transfer rate would have not been possible if we would have stick with um, you know, uh, some, some numerous amounts. Of course, uh, we are developing uh, uh, you know, the M mount adapter as well so that, uh, of course, you can use your you know, Leica lenses on this camera um, and, 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 of course, uh, take advantage of you know, some of the, uh, the high quality lenses that are out there um, that are, already exist. Okay, so looking at the front of this camera, of course, we also have the, um, the switch. It is a hybrid viewfinder, uh, but what's unique on this is that it's actually a multi-view hybrid viewfinder. So there's actually a sliding glass that magnifies uh, uh, the, the, the LCD screen internally or, or, so that, or the optical viewfinder internally as well, so that when you interchange the different lenses, it automatically gives you proper magnification so that you can see and frame your shot a lot easier. With range finder style cameras, if you put a long zoom camera in, um, nothing changes on the screen. The only thing that changes really is the, uh, the overlay that shrinks smaller and smaller. But sometimes on a long zoom camera, it's hard to see what you're framing with that small little screen, even though you have that large uh, viewfinder. And so having the magnification glass that slides in automatically as you stick each lens in uh, it really makes you know, the photo experience a lot easier, especially for framing, especially using, again, the telephoto macro lens uh, that we have. Again, in the front, you also have the EF assist lamp for the two stereo microphones here. So let's just turn the camera on. Um, it's similar to the X100 in terms of switch. The on and off switch is on top. You also got the shutter cable. Oops. You know what? I've got to put the batteries in. So uh, let's go take a look at the bottom of the camera. It does use a new battery. It's the uh, MPW126 battery here. And uh, just following the uh, diagrams to insert the batteries properly, you do that. And I'm just going to stick a memory card as well. Uh, the camera uses an SD card. I highly recommend an SD, SDHC, and SDXC card. Um, and especially if you're going to shoot raw and HD videos, I, I highly recommend a very fast card, you know, at least a class 6 or higher card uh, for doing HD videos or even shooting raw and JPEGs. Ideally, find the fastest card you can afford. That would be best for this x one camera. Um, okay, so let's uh, try to turn the camera on again now uh, with the batteries in. As you can see, very similar to the X100, um, you have sort of that information screen. Uh, the view button is now moved up to the top, so it's not, it's more in the proper position where you have your eyes up and you can sw quickly switch. You got that, again, the auto eye sensor that switches between the two different views. You can push it so that it goes up to the top and or switch it so it only shows the LCD screen 
or again having the eye sensor. Pushing the display button will toggle between the different uh, screen options you have here. You've got the custom modes. Again, very similar layout to that of the X100. Of course, the LCD screen resolution is similar to the X100, but the actual anti-reflective coating that's on this, on this uh, um, LCD screen is much improved and actually provides for better color reproduction, almost four times better than the average LCD out there, including the, the brightness of, of the screen as well. You notice the button controls are a lot larger than previous uh, X100 because we had a lot of people uh, complaining about how the buttons were a little bit hard to, to navigate and so we created the buttons a lot easier to push and properly located as well. Uh, one thing I want to show you is that in the menu option on this camera, um, as you can see, there's actually you know, five different tabs for shooting and three different tabs for setup. So it's a lot quicker to go through some of the menu settings on the camera and you can just jump in and select the, the options that you want to correct. So again, a lot faster, a lot easier than having just one tab where you have to scroll through you know, the multiple pages. You can actually just jump over to the tabs. So that's newly improved in the shooting menu. Also in the playback menu, it's the same thing as well. Again, pushing the menu OK button, you have various tabs on the side now so that you don't have to navigate multiple pages to get one thing. You can just switch by the tabs itself.